But master, how will I know when I'm ready? Just like Grasshopper, your older brother, you, Dung Beetle, will be ready when you can snatch this painter's pyramid from my hand. Hey, look! Grasshopper's come home! Grasshopper! My favorite pupil! Ha! Fooled you, old man. I guess I'm ready now. Why, you little son of a bitch! Hi. Dale coming to you from my garage again, and it's kind of a rite of passage for every woodworker to build their first cutting board, cheese board, charcuterie board, or whatever board. In this video, I was going to make my first charcuterie board, but then I thought to myself, Self, you are nowhere near fancy enough to make a charcuterie board. Instead, I'm making a meat board. For some inspiration, I went to the guy that wrote the book on making cutting boards. This is a great book by David Prosciutto. It is filled with tips and tricks and ideas. It is really a wonderful book. I will leave a link in the description below to both his channel and this book so that you can get there quickly. Come on, let's go. Oh, I almost forgot. David Prosciutto, who's in your house? I'm in your house. The first thing I need to do is rip down some boards. I'm using maple and alder for this charcuterie board. I'm ripping them down to about one and a quarter inches. This will be the pre-finished thickness of my board. Notice my brand new assembly table that I'm using for my outfeed table. This is the first project where I'm using this table. If you haven't seen the video of me building this table, check it out. I think you'll like it. The next thing I do is use my thickness planer to smooth out each side of each board. I also create different thicknesses to some boards to give the final product a bit more interest. Remember, the one and a quarter inches I ripped on the table saw will end up being the thickness of the charcuterie board. What I'm doing now is using the planer to set the widths of each individual board for the final product. Things so far are going great and it's time to cross cut the pieces to a rough length. For this board, that's about 19 inches. I'll leave two boards a good 7 or 8 inches long for the surprise feature later on. Don't leave me yet or you'll miss the surprise. Oh yeah, if you're paying attention and looking close, which I'm sure you're doing, right? You'll see the different thicknesses of each board as I'm cross cutting with my table saw sled which is yet another video you should go and watch if you haven't seen. It's already glue up time. I'm using Type On 3 for a couple reasons. First, it is waterproof and since this board is going to be getting washed, I thought it best. Second, and the bigger reason I chose it, it has a longer setup time, so I get just a bit longer to complete the glue up. While it is more controversial than toilet paper dispensing in an over or under position, my opinion is Type On 2 would be just fine to use. When washing your board, you should never submerge it or let it soak. You should hand wash with soap and immediately dry it. It's also a good idea to let it dry standing on edge and not leave it lying flat. Because of this, it's not going to be getting super wet so the water resistant properties of Type On 2 should be just fine. But hey, it's your world, I'm just living in it, so do your own research and make up your own mind. The key is don't cheap out on glue. You need to have very good glue coverage. Clamping from both top and bottom will help keep it flat, but even better is to use calls covered in packing tape so they don't stick to the board. That's really how you're going to keep your board nice and flat during the clamping process. As a special surprise to my dear friends, I wanted to personalize their board. A few weeks before Christmas, I sneakily asked them, Hey, for no reason at all, I was just wondering what each of your favorite Bible verses are. Really, no reason at all. I'm not going to laser burn this onto something handmade for you for a Christmas present or anything like that. Oh, I think I nailed it so they had no idea. Well, they gave them to me, and I do have an inexpensive laser engraver, and I am going to laser engrave both verses to the sides of the board. Notice that I'm burning these on the last two strips before I glue to the board. It's easier this way to burn it first, then do a final glue up putting the final two pieces on. I could have done this even sooner and done it all as a single glue up as well. 
The key is do it before the final pieces are glued on. Also, this gives you a chance to mess up and do an engraving one more time, which you'll see that I do. If you do it like me and the first burn has an issue, simply turn the strip over and burn it again on the other side. The bad burn will simply be glued to the inside of the board and no one will ever know. Now that everything is glued up, I can take my paint scraper and scrape off the dried glue from the top and the bottom of the board and then send it through my planer to smooth out both sides of the board and to get it to its final thickness. Notice that the final two pieces are cut extra long. This is so that any snipe that occurs going through my planer will happen on the waste pieces. This allows me to maximize the length of the board as I know I'm going to have snipe because I know I do not have my planer dialed in perfectly. For those of you that follow my channel, know that this was actually made before I swapped out my cutter head from straight blades to helical cutters. Now I simply square off each edge to clean it up and to get the board to its final length. Next, I give a good sanding on all edges. I start with 120, then 220, then 320. After 320, I wet the board to pop the grain, and after it dries, I sand one more time with 320. For this board, I went with Team Roundover, and I put a slight roundover on all edges. I go back and forth between chamfers and roundovers. I like them both, and it really just depends on the mood I'm in when I'm building it. I'm also team feet, so I use a punch to set where the rubber feet will go. I like my feet to be inset a bit into the board, so I use a four center bit to drill shallow holes for the feet to be set in. While I'm not fancy enough to make a charcuterie board, this meat board will have fancy handles. I make a quick jig to mark where the holes need to be to mount the handles. I drill holes all the way through the board to mount the handles and then I use a Forstner bit to drill fairly deep countersink holes so the screws will not protrude from the bottom of the board. What's that? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm also on Team Mineral Oil Bath. I soak the board in a bath of pure mineral oil. I let it soak for about 20 minutes on each side. I find that is more than enough time. Probably could even cut it down to only 10 minutes on each side. I then let it drip dry over the bath for a full day. That's generally plenty of time as well. I don't waste the oil. I pour it back into their jugs for the next time. Now I give it a tramp stamp. I mean, now I burn in my logo. The only thing left to do is to install the feet and the handles. That's easy enough to do with a screwdriver. You should install these by hand. After all this work and seeing how pretty it turned out, the last thing you'd want to do is use a power drill and either strip out a hole or even worse, crack the board. And now a couple beauty clips of the finished product. I think it looks great. So here is my first ever charcuterie board. For us non-fancy folk, it's a meat board. I think it came out great. So great that it's gonna be hard to actually give it away. But this is going as a Christmas gift to two of the best and sweetest people in the world. I really hope they like it. Again, first ever, I think it came out just wonderful. I am really, really happy with the way this came out. Until next time, see ya.